Hello. Today I'm going to discuss implementing FSOE over EAP, or exchanging safety relevant data over an IP network, much in the same way that you would on the plant floor. In our example today, I have my engineering laptop connected to a switch, connected to two CX controllers, each with their own safety programs. So let me show you how it's done. First, we're going to start with two fully functional programs, each with their own TwinSafe project. Next, we're going to add our first EAP connection to machine number one. We'll choose the network adapter that's currently plugged into our switch. And now we'll add in both a publisher and a subscriber. Next, we'll choose our variable sets. We're going to do a search for FSOE. That shows us the different sizes that are available. We're going to choose FSOE underscore six for each one of our variable sets. Next, we're going to give our publisher a variable ID number. We're going to leave this one as number one. Under the subscriber, we'll also point it to its publisher, which will be variable ID two. Now we'll do the same thing on machine two. Now when it comes time to set the variable IDs, we'll set this publisher to two, and we'll set the variable ID that the subscriber is pointed to, to one. Let's recap what we just did. When we set up our publishers and subscribers, we left the defaults. So the publisher is producing multicast traffic, which means that anybody can consume it. Meanwhile, the subscriber is accepting that data from any publisher. Now, when it comes to the variable sets themselves, what we did was we pointed them at each other. So the publishers we set as IDs one and the other machine we set as an ID two. And then the subscriber that's on the alternate side, we pointed back at that. In this way, we make a logical connection. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our FSOE connections. So we'll go offline with each one of our safety controllers. Under alias devices, add new item, custom FSOE connection. Open that. Then on machine two, we'll do the same thing. Add new item, custom FSOE connection. Now open them up side by side. We're going to set the safe address of the two FSOE connections to match because this is the newest generation of hardware. We'll leave linking mode manual and link the input. Uh, uncheck the box, exclude other devices because we want, actually want to see the other EAP device that we created. And link these to the variables that we placed in the EAP device. And save. Now under the connection tab, we'll leave machine one as FSOE master is the mode and we'll set the mode on machine two as FSOE slave. And we'll change the type to EL6910 because that's what we're working with. And save. And you'll see our process image of our FSOE device is six bytes in, six bytes out, which is default. We didn't change anything. Now in our code, we'll add on machine two, we'll also send our signal to the master and connect that to our FSOE connection. 
And then in machine one, we'll delete this decouple block and place an AND block and add in from slave and then reconnect our in and our out bits. and connect our FSOE connection. We're going to verify and verify the hardware. And now we'll do a download to both of our safety processors using the multi-download button. And activate the configuration on both sides. And now we'll turn on our sunglasses. Now we're going to activate our run bits on both sides. And you'll see that we're all green. We're running. We've made our logical connection. We're connected over EAP. So now our in on the master side turns it on and off. And on the machine two or slave side, I can turn it on and off. And it affects what's going on on machine one and you can see their logical connection is made. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.